Hello my friends, this is my take on the Helimax 230SI. I bought this thing because I received so many messages from 230SI owners calling the modder guy to the rescue. Dum -da -da -dum -dum -da -dum -dum. So let me show you what the problem is. Flying this thing is a bit like that. Soldier, full throttle. And he goes... Uh, I, I, I am already going full throttle! This is full throttle. As soon as you start cranking on the right stick, it just brings him to the knees. Yaw, too much yaw? Doesn't like that either. Two motors are obviously not enough to keep this thing airborne. It's like a flying tank. I actually planned to take the landing feet off to make it a little bit lighter. Turns out they're not landing feet, they are like bumper bars to um, get you back up in the air if you hit the ground. And hitting the ground, it does often. I said full throttle. I'm, I'm trying sir, I'm trying. It weighs almost 140 gram. I don't have high hopes, but let's see what we can do about it. To get to the precious interior, you gotta remove five screws on each arm. And you can crack one half off, pull the little plug off here, and we get the whole motor assembly. Now one thing what usually sucks on these geared toy copters, the bearings. So look at this one, you can look through it. It, um, yeah, right, come on, let's take some good bearings. Bokka bearings, six by three by two millimeters, metal shielded, $11.95 for eight, one problem less. The motors are actually pretty good that they can carry this thing at all, but, well, of course they have to go. Let's bring on the good stuff. These are some CL820-15 motors. I'll turn the pinions around so they catch the gears properly. I take the 15 motors over the faster 17 motors because this tank doesn't need speed, it needs torque. I apologize for focusing less on focusing than on soldering, but I'm basically just taking the old motor wires off and solder the same wire colors to those solar pads on these little PCB boards and screw them back in place. Push the motor back in, make sure the wires are in their channels and don't get pinched, and then push them into these little tabs here so they don't get tangled up in the gears. All right, let's fiddle it back together and see if better bearings, better motors, better pinions actually help something. Sounds still pretty rough. Well, the only thing left is the spur gears. I don't have something what fits. So let's crank out the Mach-Off C3 Ceramic Loop, the ultimate dry chain lubricant um, that I got from um, the bike shop. I hope this makes the gears last a little bit longer because noise in the gear means friction and that means they are eating themselves up. They die sooner or later even without choking them. Speaking of, let's see how he does now. Zack, zack, Kamerad, in die Spur. This is Pack 3 through the new set of motors. It needed the first two packs to actually settle in, it was a bit touchy to fly the first two battery packs. But now the brushes seem to have settled in and 
it has a quite useful throttle curve. It's not exactly powerful, it's still just too heavy for these motors, but yeah, it's flyable. I hope that was helpful. I hope that helped those who thought about buying one, making a um, reasonable decision, and those who made the mistake of buying a 230SI have a few instructions how to fix it. See ya later.